So while they send him off to the comfy room, Terry is trying to get info on Shreve, but unfortunately the only investigative experience he has is watching porn videos on the internet. Can I help you? Yeah. Here's your pizza, Chief. And just expects to be let in and join Shreve for dinner. Somehow, this works, and Terry gets his coat off, but I'm afraid that's as far as Shreve is willing to get on the first date. Cool. What's this do? Don't touch that. Oh, that's great. You killed the Foley artist. It's one of Shreve's many inventions, but when he tries to show Terry the door, the next generation of the world's greatest detective gives himself away by asking about destructive sound waves, which had nothing to do with what they were talking about. So Shreve attacks him, but Terry gets him right in the brown note and starts hiding. But no problem, Shreve is perfectly happy to destroy his lab filled with expensive equipment to deal with this kid. Which not only means that he's out all of the stuff that bankrupted his company in the first place, but it's drawn the police in, so now he's a wanted man. While Shreve has a moment to think about the long string of bad decisions that has led to this moment, Terry learns about Bruce being committed, and what's worse, Powers' plan to take over his affairs since he has no next of kin. Terry responds to this villain banter the way you'd expect. Careful. The courts are very strict about slander. Yeah? Then let's see how they handle assault. <laughs> yeah, besides wisecracking, most heroes are limited to using their fists for debate. So with that sorted, Powers returns to his office, where Shreve is waiting, pissed off and wanting revenge, now that he did, well, everything since he said, Of course I'll murder a man to keep you happy. Well, Powers has an ace up his sleeve. Have you ever considered trying out super villainy full time? He even gives him the name Shriek, and apparently that just settles everything for him. Now go forth and do damage. What, that's it? That's your help? I christen thee Shriek! Now go forth and break things. Should I, like, rob a bank while I'm doing that? Uh, sure, fine, whatever. Meanwhile, Bruce is still hearing voices telling him his food is poisoned, but all that does is piss him off. Luckily, Terry comes by and, after a false start, realizes the speaker is actually behind Bruce's bandage. He'd seen something similar back in Shreve's lab. Too quiet to be heard unless you held it very close. Thanks to that gizmo, they can track the signal back to its source, a factory, which is great because that's just full of valuable shit that can get smashed up during a fight. Shriek's tech is so good that it can pick up the sound of Terry knocking over a screw, so Terry figures if he turns everything on, it should cover his tracks. Nope, Shriek's tech can filter everything else out and just pick up the sound of Terry running around. This scene is very eerie because we hear things as Shriek does, total silence except for the occasional patter-patter of tiny bat feet. Obviously, this shouldn't be possible, but then, in comic books, you usually have to accept powers that don't make sense. There, there's probably an X-Man whose power is to control the phases of the moon or turn leaves into butterflies or something. Thanks to timely intervention by Ace, which, let me remind you, is a dog, Terry is saved from the bad guy. This gives him a chance to hit one of the devices on Shriek's suit with a batarang, screwing it up so badly that it literally renders Shreve deaf for life. Get up. Dude, wh why didn't you do that instead of just holding your head and screaming? I mean, there wasn't even a chin strap to undo. Despite that, Shreve refuses to testify against Powers because... I don't know, maybe he mentions it in the follow-up episode. There's got to be more to this new villain than that. They're building a rogues gallery. But the question on Terry's mind was, how Bruce could have been so sure that he wasn't just cracking up? Well, first, I know I'm not psychotic. I hope your other reason's more convincing. And second... The voice kept calling me Bruce. In my mind, that's not what I call myself. I'd believe that. Though now I can't help but picture his brain's default mode just being muttering, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Batman, 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 Batman! I like almost everything about the idea of Shriek, the scientist slash engineer supervillain. That's always a good starting point. And his powers are diverse, yet united by a common theme. The part I don't like is his motivation. He works for power, so suddenly he's perfectly willing to just murder someone? A decision that is so unimportant that it's made off-screen? We can see from the beginning he's got a bit of a sinister streak to him, putting on that train show for powers. But it's a big step from scaring someone to killing them. 
Bruce gets a bit of a peek into his head, though, and with the visit to the historical district and the discussion of what goes on in his thoughts, well, we get a bit of fleshing out there. Terry is still obviously learning the ropes of being Batman. It definitely requires Bruce's guidance. He has the raw talent, but he basically stumbled into the answer here. As an episode, it's enjoyable. The crazy parts were eerie, and as I said, the part where it was silence, that was just otherworldly. It just felt like there was a little more that needed to be done to make the villain feel more fleshed out. If you want more DCAU, it's back to Justice League next week with Fearful Symmetry. Imagine the time and effort this suit would save construction workers, road builders, dynamite's cheaper.